In this video I've come to Woodland Valley Farm in Cornwall which is the home of the Cornwall Beaver Project and I'm going to be talking about beavers and like all the exciting things they do. So here we have a taxidermy beaver and this is quite interesting for seeing like the different adaptations that beavers have. So I guess most obvious is the kind of really long flat scaly tail and they use that to sort of swim through the water so they move it up and down and then because it's really flattened it's really good at kind of pushing them through the water. Uh, and then they've also got these really webbed, massive hind feet. And again, they use them to swim uh, really effectively. But then interestingly, the front feet are not webbed. And that's because they use these a lot to kind of manipulate branches and stuff and pick up the branches to make the dams and to sort of grab leaves to put them in their mouth. And then they've also got really red teeth. And the reason the teeth are red is because they've got a lot of iron in them and this makes them really strong for gnawing down trees. And then they've also got two layers of fur. So they've got a sort of coarse outer fur and then a, a sort of fluffier inner fur. So the coarse outer fur kind of keeps them dry uh, and, and keeps them the dirt off and stuff. And then the really fluffy inner fur keeps them nice and warm. So I guess those are the kind of key adaptations. But what's really cool about beavers is not only how they're adapted to their aquatic lifestyle, but also how these adaptations allow them to do things which then have a huge impact on the environment. So in order to see that, we're going to go down to the enclosure and see where the beavers are and see some of the amazing things that they've done. So here we've got, obviously, the most obvious thing that beavers do is build dams. And this dam is just a really incredible structure. I mean, you know, the strength of this whole thing, it's got these quite big, big sticks all holding it together. And all these things also sort of meshed up. And then another thing they do which makes it really strong is they pile up loads of mud from the back. There's actually a huge kind of slope behind the dam. So at the base it's like several metres wide. And all that mud kind of makes it really strong and it all sort of goes in in amongst all the sticks and sticks it all together. And then you also get these plants growing out of it. So this whole thing actually becomes like an entire kind of living structure. And then what's also really cool is that you get all this water trickling through. And that's really cool because then you get these sort of different habitats being created here. So in the pool it's obviously really slow flowing uh, and that's quite good for sort of frog spawn and some fish and stuff. Whereas then in these faster flowing bits coming through we get all these gravels and these are quite good for some fish like trout. They like to lay their eggs in the gravels like this. And also dippers, they like to forage in these areas uh, because the sort of invertebrates that they prey on like to live under the rocks and stuff. And you also get these streams kind of coming around the edges of the dams as they're being diverted outwards. And this just creates a lot more diversity in the kind of structure of the stream. Because before there was just one channel going down the middle. Whereas now we've got this pool and then the streams come out around the outside and they're kind of meandering through the floodplain here. And then also behind the dams you get a lot of marshy vegetation developing. And this is partly because the beavers have removed the trees so there's no longer any shade. And now you get all this sort of new growth coming up and this can provide a really good home for species like moorhens and water rails and water rails are quite a rare bird so it's really exciting that they've moved in here after the beavers have created all this habitat and what's also really amazing is this mud that i'm standing in like i'm really kind of immersed in this mud it's amazing and you know all this mud is building up and falling out of the water so that means that the water downstream is going to be a lot cleaner because all this muck is sort of being filtered out. Another thing that the beaver dams do is that they slow down the flow of water. So here we've got this tiny little stream coming in here and then the beavers have built this massive, really long dam. It's only about this high, but it's really long. So this, this little tiny stream has been diverted out into this huge shallow pool and then all that water is just seeping through that dam really slowly. So, you know, on a larger scale, beavers could really slow down these big incidences of kind of flash flooding. So when we get a lot of heavy rain upstream, instead of just sort of going straight down and flooding all the towns, it would sort of seep through all these pools and, and dams and channels and stuff. And then we wouldn't get such like sudden massive flooding events further downstream. So here the beavers have taken down this tree. And I think it's just really incredible, like the strength of their teeth and their jaw muscles to bite through this. I mean, it's really tough wood. And if you look at the skeletons of beavers, you can see they've got quite big kind of ridges on the, on, the, on the skull and around the jaw. And that's to attach these really massive muscles so they can exert a huge force in order to bite through this really, really tough wood. 
And another very cool thing here is that these trees don't just die when, they, when they're coppiced like this, when they're cut over. They, they actually re-sprout like this. So this, this is a lot like when people make hedges or when they coppice trees. They kind of re-sprout. And for the beavers, this is really important because these really young leaves can be a lot more nutritious and easier to digest than the older leaves. So by cutting the trees down like this and then promoting this re-sprouting, they're, they're almost kind of farming the trees. They're sort of engineering their environment to provide this really good food source. And then another thing which is really amazing is the lodges. And these are a huge feat of construction, really. I mean, some of these, these uh, logs that they're putting on here are really quite heavy. Uh, so to chuck those on is really quite impressive. And it's all sort of moulded together with all this mud as well that they dredge up from the pond. So generally, what I think is really amazing about beavers is just, is just the way that they transform their environment. So as we've seen in this video, they kind of build the dams and then that creates a lot of other habitats for other species in the wetlands and also in the streams that go around the dams. And then the dams also slow down the flow of water and they kind of change the whole structure of the river systems as well. So we have all these branching streams rather than just single channels. And so I think it's just profoundly amazing really to kind of experience this whole ecosystem and all these different things that are going on and all this sort of structural diversity and different habitats and different, different processes, different sediments and everything. And that this whole thing has just been created by these beavers. Like, we don't really have another species that does that in the UK, that actually kind of creates whole ecosystems. Another thing which is really amazing about beavers, and particularly about kind of reintroducing them, is that if we had like a 20 metre buffer either side of all of our streams and rivers, and then we let the beavers loose, and we had loads of beavers kind of modifying all the, the trees that were growing up in these buffers and building dams and everything, then that would kind of create these amazing corridors through the landscape because kind of automatically all of the rivers and streams they do kind of link up so if we had these amazing habitats being created by beavers it would all kind of link together and also it would kind of link up other other nature areas so if we kind of restore some larger areas of land then they can get linked up by these corridors that the beavers create along the rivers so i think that reintroducing beavers is like the number one thing that we should be doing um, in the uk at the moment uh, and hopefully i've persuaded you that that, that is true and yeah, you should definitely go and go and visit some beaver projects. It's really exciting. I think they're amazing.